All right, well, let's go ahead and tackle it. Frequency separation. This whole video is gonna be about what frequency separation is and how you can leverage it in different ways. Keep in mind, frequency separation, it's, it's highly debated. It's a big, you know, it's a topic that people argue about constantly in terms of if it's worth it, is it good, is it bad? We're not here to debate that. At the end of the day, every tool, every method can be leveraged appropriately and inappropriately. So we're not here to discuss that. Frequency separation, is absolutely useful depending on how you use it, but understanding it is key. All right, and so hopefully in this video, I'm gonna take you through it rather organically. This is not gonna be some highly technical lesson, um, but I wanna show you frequency separation in general because I use it on every single edit or 95% of them. So I think it's important that we show you. So I wanna start out today simply showing you how to set up frequency separation manually and then other options for setting it up and then how to tweak those options and what those things can mean for you. Okay, so you ready? Take a deep breath, let's go. So setting up frequency separation is interesting because it, it, the process can be memorized and many people have it memorized and you can also put it into an action. But the fact is most of us don't understand the math and uh, I'm one of those people, I, I, I'm, I'm most of us. <laughs> because the math is what we call algorithms and this is mathematical computations, equations, calculations and all that, they do a lot of different things. Uh, we as artists tend to use uh, Photoshop very literally, very organically. We see an image, there's a photo of a model. So we have Freya right here and that's a photo of her. We see eyes, hair, outfit, jeans, skin, shadows. We see what our mind is perceiving, but we have to remember this is an illusion, okay? That's kind of important to keep in mind. This is all just an illusion, all right? So we have an image here, 6,000 pixels tall. That's gonna be relatively important in a minute. So we're gonna check that out. But keep in mind, the digital representation of a person, of an image, of, a, of, a, of an apple, of a mountain, of a house, of a guitar, is an illusion. So we get our head around that idea even a little bit without understanding the math. That's a whole, you know, sort of calculus kind of thing. I'm assuming calculus. <laughs> I just know it's very, very heavy math. Um, if we don't worry about that, but we get our head around the idea that we're dealing with an illusion, we're dealing with technical stuff, then we can start to understand frequency separation a little bit better. All right, so let's go through the universal way that everyone should know if they've ever researched it um, on how to do it manually. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate our background layer just to have something to work with. Keep in mind, um, most of the time, like 95% of the time, I don't jump right into frequency separation uh, on my workflow right in Photoshop. We're gonna do it now for the sake of demo, okay? So I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna call that low. We're gonna explain what that means in a little bit because it's low frequency. I'm gonna duplicate it again. We're gonna call it high. Now look, if you've seen this before, bear with me. I just wanna be thorough, okay? It's almost certain that you've seen this before. But if you have not, pay extra attention. At the moment, we have a duplicate of the background layer called low and a duplicate of the background layer called high. The names are not relevant. However, they help us stay organized over the next few processes, okay? So let's go over that. We're gonna turn off high because we need to view low, okay? Now, in terms of frequency separating, what we're doing, and, and if you think of frequency like in audio, like the radio frequency or something like that, you know, what's the frequency, Kenneth, REM? <laughs> um, frequency has nothing to do, or excuse me, has everything to do with audio and sound and sound waves, but it also has everything to do with the way the, the visual, the visual stuff that you see on a computer. I know I'm really, really oversimplifying. I'm trying to not make this technical, okay? But the, the pixels that you're seeing, the colors, the perception that you're seeing, um, the way the, the it's processed, if you will, has to do with frequency as well. Now, that didn't make any much sense, but here's the way you can think about it. High frequency are like minute, tiny details. It is how fast, if you will, um, contrast changes as you as, as the image moves along, as you look through the image. For example, a high frequency point is gonna be like these tiny creases up here on her forehead or this little tiny dot from a piercing on her nose um, or the micro texture on her lips and of course, all the micro texture on her face. And this can be tweaked and adjusted, which we're gonna do, but frequency means Low frequency, it doesn't contain all of that micro texture. High frequency does. You do not under, need to understand the math, but you need to understand that's what we're doing. So the low frequency, we need to get rid of all this micro texture to create our low frequency layer, okay? And there's many ways to go about doing it, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to filter on the low layer, blur, and we're gonna choose one of these blurring operators, also known as filters, okay? There's a lot of them. There's a lot of different 
methods that people prefer is about three or four uh, smoothing operators or blurring operators that people like. Um, one of them, of course, is median, which we'll talk about in other videos. But we're going to go ahead and choose surface blur on this one, which I think is the most purposeful one. As you can see, some detail has been lost already in terms of the micro texture. If I increase the radius radically, okay, you'll see how it's getting blurry and the threshold's going up. And now we're losing a lot of detail. This is extreme, and I'm not trying to say that this is a good idea. It really isn't. <laughs> we just need to remove the top frequency layer, the high frequency layer, in a nice, reasonable manner. So generally speaking, I'm going to find, I don't know, maybe like a... Let's try a 15, and we're going to do a threshold of something on the order of maybe 10. Okay, so let's hit OK. Now, if we turn on the high layer above it, on, off, you see the vast majority of the high frequency, the texture, is there now, and now it's gone. Cool. Next step. Okay, we go to our high layer, and we go to Image, Apply Image. Get a little technical here, but just simply need to memorize this, okay? We need to choose the layer that we want. We want to go to Low. We want to apply low, if you will, and we want to apply it with something called subtract. Now, here is that this is where it's important to remember that the math is incredibly complicated and that's not what we're here to solve. The image looks a little bizarre. I don't know how well you're seeing it on your video, but you can see that the texture is in there in this strange low contrast gray thing. All right, it's very odd. The numbers you need to worry about down here, opacity 100%, of course, scale 2 and offset 128. Minor tweaks to those numbers can make other changes as well, but that's pretty advanced and you have to know exactly why you want to do that. But for the most part, we leave it alone. Okay, so we take, we choose the layer that we want to, if you will, apply <laughs> low, excuse me, want to apply the low to the high using a subtract blending mode. Cool math, doesn't matter why, hit OK, now it's done. But there's one more step. Okay, we need to go to the blending mode of the high layer now that we have this gray thing, right? And we switch it to something called linear light. Now, when we do that, the image goes back to normal. It goes back to normal. So, but check this out. If I turn off the high layer we just created, you see the blur underneath, of course, because we created the low layer, and now we have the high layer. Cool, we've gone through the process manually. What does that mean for us? Hmm. Well, let's try to look at some samples. What we have done is we've separated the high texture, the micro texture, with some certain numbers and radius that we'll talk about in a bit. We've separated the high texture from the low. In other words, the micro texture of her skin has been separated from the color of her skin, more or less. We can prove that by, if we create a new layer above low, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one just transitions for now, which is a retouching term, okay? Now, we have a blank layer in between high and low. If I were to take a paintbrush, 100% opacity, 100% flow, and I'm going to use alter option and select a skin tone color. It does not matter. I'll choose that one. There we go. Now, with 100% everything, if I paint, all right, see that? Let's zoom in. Look what I've done. I've painted above the low layer and below the high layer, one of the methods we can use in frequency separation. And what have we accomplished? <laughs> the texture is on top. Right? The micro texture is on top. The fine skin texture is on top. If I go down here and continuing this ridiculous demo because it looks terrible, <laughs> if I choose a color holding down an alter option of her lip right there, if I paint her lip, we've obliterated a lot of texture because it's way too strong. But look, look, there's still texture in the lip. And you might see like that the lip wasn't as successful as the skin in terms of preserving the texture. And that's because not all texture is created equal. This is why as we get more advanced in, in skin retouching and retouching in general, we might do multiple passes, if you will, of frequency separation. I'm going to delete the transitions layer because you don't need that right now. We might do multiple passes of frequency separation at different radii. Yes, radii, not radiuses, guys. Radii. Okay, we might do one at a radius of four. And then we might do another one at a radius of 14 or 16. And depending on the blurring operator you use, there's other settings there. Like surface blur has threshold and things of that nature. But right now, what you need to know is that frequency separation separates the texture from the color, essentially. That will give us the power to start smoothing in colored areas or areas of tone on skin without disrupting the skin texture. Now that is the oversimplification, and that is what most people find out about. They read about, they watch a video about it, and then they hit the ground running. The problem is they hit the ground running and they run into a wall because those are just the two basic broad concepts separating the high texture from the low texture. But when you understand it better in general, 
and you understand how to leverage it and crucially when to leverage it, that's when your results of frequency separation can be better. Now, further thing that you're going to see on the other videos of all the workflow is understanding when frequency separation is useful on a certain area that you need it to be useful for. And if so, how to set it up for that area. This will come with time. This will come with practice. This will come with understanding what your eye is seeing. Understand, having done a thousand of them, 10,000 of them, you'll know. You look at a spot and go, okay, um, these creases on the forehead, I'm going to set frequency separation to about a 14, 15 radius. Um, and then I'm going to, you know, do some healing on the, on the high layer, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, because I am, I'm probably, that's probably going to work for me. It's, it's so important to understand. And that's what we're going to see on every single video. And you probably have seen it on every single video on, this tutorial collection is that <clears throat> understanding when is just as important as how. And then most important of all those two, most abstract is if, if it's needed, <laughs> if it's what you want. So frequency separation, as you can tell, has me the most sort of discombobulated because I feel like I want to inject everyone with the knowledge and experience that I've had over 10 years of doing this. Um, I don't even know how many edits I've done using frequency separation. 10,000 comes to mind, 50,000, I, I don't even know. So in using it a lot, I've understood how to leverage it where I need it, you know? Um, so keep that in mind. Now, um, in terms of what we can do with just a simple setup like this, uh, to get the setup quickly, I should say, we can set it up as an action. Everything I just showed you can be set up as an action. You can make your own, you can download them from all over. There's plenty of frequency separation actions, but showing you how to do it manually is very, very important. So let's do some variations on that to show you why the settings can matter. They absolutely matter. Okay. So let's talk about that. Let's delete these two and let's do it again. We're going to make a couple of different demos for you. Okay. Let's duplicate. We're going to call this one low. Let's duplicate that one. We're going to call this one high again, but now we're going to group these two. This is not any function at all. This is simply for organization for this demo. And I'm going to call this four because that's going to be a four radius. Now, because I haven't modified these at all, I can duplicate the entire folder and get exactly what I need. Again, we're going to call this one eight, duplicate that folder again. And we're going to call this one 16. All right. This is again, just for demos that you do not need to do this process at all. Okay. So we're going to turn off those two. Let's go to our number four. Okay. So we're going to go turn off high, go to low, Filter, Blur, Surface Blur, and I'm going to put the radius on four. We're going to leave the threshold where it is to make sure our demos, our compared contrast are consistent. Okay, so radius of four. Now, we're going to go to high. We will go to apply image. And we'll go to low, which is the bottom layer, low, subtract two, etc. It all looks like it should look. Hit OK. And now, linear light. So we turn off turn on and off that folder of radius of four and we notice that nothing has changed. Success. So we'll turn that one off. We'll turn on eight. Again, this is only for demos. Bear with me. We're going to do this real quick. So let's turn off high, go to low, filter, blur, and we will go to eight. There we go. Turn on high, image, apply image. Go to the one in question, low, subtract. There it is. Linear light. See that? Okay, turn off eight. Let's go to 16. Turn off high, go to low. <laughs> and now we go 16. Excellent. And then we go to high and we say apply image. Subtract, of course, and we go to low. And there it is. And we change to linear light. Okay, so now we have 16, eight, and four ready to go for demo purposes. How can we look at the demo? Well, let's look at this. Turn on four. I'm going to create a layer in between, choose a sort of an even skin tone, maybe somewhere there. I'm going to fill the entire layer with that. Look at the details. Can you see that? This is what the texture is being preserved. This is how much texture is being preserved. Okay. It's kind of abstract to see. This is why we're going to compare and contrast. So I'm going to duplicate that layer by holding option or alt. I'm going to duplicate it into the eight, dump it on top. Now turn that one on. Very difficult to see, but check it out. I'm going to turn off eight. There's four. I'm going to zoom in one more. There's four, there's eight, there's four, there's eight. What's happening is that more of the broader texture is coming into the high frequency, into the high layer. You can probably imagine what happens next. Let's go to option or alt, drag that demo layer up top to 16. Let's turn on 16. Okay. 
you can see hard to see but minor details are shifted okay more broad texture is being preserved I'm going to turn off 8 and I'm going to compare 16 to 4 now 4 16 4 16. Do you see all the broader areas, the, the shading, the, the indentions in the skin and the eyes, um, everything, the, the deeper sort of texture, the, the, if you look at it like in a 3D manner, the tiny little texture is of course there, but you're bringing in broader and broader texture with a higher radius. When you have four, you don't have those broader areas. Like look at the area of the nose here at 16. You see these shadows that are just part of the anatomy? Well, on 16, they're there. They've been preserved somewhat, but on four, they're gone. So, what does that mean for you? Well, let's go ahead and turn off the demo. What that means for you is that, in general, there's so many different ways to go about doing it. But if you think to yourself, I want to preserve more realistic texture of the skin, or the jeans, or the hair, or the curtain, or the concrete. Please understand frequency separation can be used for a lot. If you want to preserve more broad texture when you go through your edit, then use a slightly higher radius. If you don't want to preserve broader texture and you want that finite texture only separated, then use a smaller radius. See? Now, this, of course, as you can probably imagine, has limits. There's absolutely no reason to use 0.1 radius, not really. And there's no reason to use 100 radius or anything close to that. You'll find your balance. I recommend doing extreme tests. You'll figure out that depending on the blurring operator that you use, we're using surface blur, you can use Gaussian blur, you can use medium, you can use dust and scratches. You'll find that depending on the blurring operator that you use, that the different radii will affect things differently. This is why using frequency separation, I think, has had a bad reputation for so long. We have too many tutorials out there that are four minutes long that tell you how to set up frequency separation in one way. And then they say, run with it now. Okay, that's well-intended, well-meaning, but misguided. When you understand what's happening, again, not with the mathematics, but we understand what's happening with the texture separation, it helps you get the result that you want. So that's a very broad overview. We can get really, really finite. We can do some cool tricks as well, which we'll, we'll see, and I'm sure you've seen in other videos if you've watched the tutorial workflow video so far. Um, but that's the basics of how to set it up manually. And I think it's very, very important to show that um, because I think it's, it's a good illustration of what you can do when you think to yourself, huh, what do I want to do to this area? Can I leverage frequency separation? And if I can, what settings I think might work. It's very, very important for me to convey to you.